And, and part of my self-assessment is, Daryl, what are those areas that you need to work on in order to advance yourself, you know, um, be better at what you do, all right? And um, and they're going to be extremely obvious. I'm gonna, I will go into the prior to time management, I promise. I'm going to share some priority management tips because that's what this is all about, and I know that's what you came here for. But I think it's important, since we're so close to the new year, to start thinking about, you know, that whole new year thing that we do every year where we say, well, this is the year, you know, we're going to do this and this is the year we're going to do that. And which I love that because it's a sense of enthusiasm to start a fresh new year, you know, but, you know, but um, so one thing I've been focusing a lot of my attention on recently, and it's because of some conversations I've had with some really, really good friends who are doing some really neat things, um, is this conversation of self-discipline, you know. Just self-discipline. And, and I'll tell you something. Um, I thought I was a pretty disciplined person, but when you start researching it and studying it, you realize I got I got work to do, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I thought I was a pretty disciplined person. I said, but man, maybe I'm a little bit off, you know, because you start you start to notice that if you're disciplined, you know, in any capacity of your life. One thing that you'll find that's that's connected to discipline is consistency. And what I mean by that is what I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. <laughs> there's no there's no compromise to that. And um, and I think you know as I'm I'm studying and researching this myself, I'm going to share it with you going into the new year. Ask yourself in your own way. Where am I disciplined in areas I'm not disciplined in? How can I improve it? You know, I can't tell you how to improve yourself from a discipline perspective. You can, because we know those areas. Like for some, for instance, if you remember the last time management class we had, you know, we talked about this thing called, and this is not anyone, I'm just using the term. I didn't make it up and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. So, you know, but I know I've had some challenges with it. It's called the squirrel brain. <laughs> And the squirrel brain is a brain where it's so easily distracted, you know, like there's this, this meme that goes around where squirrels, you know, squirrels eat nuts and it'll have five nuts in his paws to go some, and then it sees one more and it wants that last one. So it'll drop the five to go get the one. <laughs> Instead of saying discipline and focused on the five that they had, it'll drop them and go get the one. Now they only got one. And so um, I'm, I'm encouraging people, and we're going to be doing a lot of training around it, around developing patterns and systems in your life. Systems are systems are one of the best ways to overcome anything dealing with discipline. Because when you put the systems in place, this is what happens. It goes on autopilot. It goes on autopilot. Now, I'm going to be careful with this because I don't want everyone to think that, you know, if you're not doing this, um, you know, something's wrong with you or whatever, but you know, we all, we all have areas in which we can improve and there's no finger pointing with any of this. So as we go into 2023, 24, self being self-disciplined is going to be huge. Now, the thing I'm doing is uh, I'm adding to my already strategic planner type thing to do more journaling. Anybody familiar with journaling at all? Yeah. Has anybody ever done it? Anybody ever journaled before? I have. I'm doing it now. What, what is it? What is it? How did how did you do it? And what did it? How did it help you? Um. So in the past, it's helped me just reflect on my day. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> You know, situations that I may or may not have handled differently. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Things that I want to do that mm -hmm. yeah. I'm trying to stay focused on doing. Yep. So I just actually started on Friday doing mm -hmm. it again. That's good. That's good. Anyone else ever do it at all? Anybody? I've done it in the past. Um I've gotten to a bad routine now with just not being consistent with the kids. Mm -hmm. I have four kids mm -hmm. and I've kind of definitely developed some bad habits, but <laughs> in the past, it really <laughs> was a way for me to say what maybe I wouldn't say aloud mm -hmm. um, and just really be able to write down exactly how I feel with 
knowing that no one else essentially needed to read yes. that or was going to read it. Mm -hmm. Um, but just a safe way to release exactly how I was feeling. That's beautiful. That's a good way to do it for both of you. Thank you. Yeah. For sharing that. Debbie, have you ever done it before? I don't know if she can hear me or not. I know. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. What was yeah, the I, question? Sorry. <laughs> no, the question was, have you ever journaled before? Personal journaling. Um... That's a I, <laughs> yeah, that's a no, but you know, yeah, yeah. that's a no, but um, I plan my activities, I review my day's activities and plan for the next day every evening before that's, I shut down the computer. I know, that's I know good. what where I stand and where I have to go tomorrow. Beautiful, so that's good. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. I end my work day. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't that's like good. It. No, that's mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. since I had yeah. a planner, so I can call that as a journal. <laughs> well, that means you, yeah. And, and you know what? And, and each person in their own rights, to be honest with you, some of us just naturally wired to do it. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I'll be honest with you. Like, my wife is just, I joke, y'all have heard me joke before, but she is like the most detail oriented human being, oriented human being I've ever met. I can't even take her on a date without going to see her calendar. <laughs> I'm not, you think I'm making this stuff up. I'm serious. I'll say, honey, let's go on a date tomorrow night. Well, did you look at my calendar to see? I, I, my, you know, everything is kind of lined up. I'm like, I just want to go on a date. <laughs> she, she don't care about no date. If it's not, if I can't see, if it's not on her calendar, I could forget it. You know, I can, I can say something two weeks out. It won't even matter, you know. And But see, my wife has a degree in electrical engineering from North Carolina A&T. She's an engineer by trade. So not just try to stereotype engineers, but typically people who take on those kind of careers are deeply detail oriented. Anybody, you know what I mean? They're deeply detail oriented. And my so, husband, my husband yeah. works for Bentley Systems and he is a senior. Yeah, okay, huh? Senior developer. I don't even know what he does. <laughs> senior Azure development. He's looking at me and he's trying to tell me what he does. So <laughs> Never mind, I don't understand it. But the the imper the pertinent part for our discussion. Hey, hon, I have a dentist appointment. Did you put it on the calendar? Did you put well, it on the no. calendar? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> but I'm telling you now. Well, that doesn't mean anything to me, Tracy. You have to put it on the calendar. No, I'm not putting it on the darn calendar. <laughs> okay, I'm because I'm, you sound just like me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Therefore, I shouldn't have to put it on the calendar. For me, that is like way too much like work. Yeah. I have it. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Like, see, I, I, I have my handy monthly. See, everybody, my handy yep. monthly thing. And I put stuff in here. Like you can all yep. see. There we go. See, I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. I do yep. it there. Mm -hmm. I know when it is, right? I'm you have that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not but putting it on that calendar. That is just way too much organization for me. And therefore, I'm not doing it. That day. <laughs> he's probably looking at you while you're saying it. Yeah, he is. He's he's glaring at me. He's just <laughs> totally glaring. Well, we're well, just to, so you can feel comfortable. We're in the same boat, you know. And and the funny thing is, I don't even know what this calendar is that she talks about, but she has some calendar somewhere that I can't even get. That. I was like, okay, but um, but it's just the wiring. It's you know, and one thing that's I'll say this. I, I'm gonna I don't want to jump off the, the, the tracks here, but. You can just learn to respect people for how they do things. You know what I mean? Like it, it used to be frustrating years ago. And I'm like, that's just my wife. That's who she is. And it's all good, you know? And in certain aspects of my life, it's really a blessing that she is like that. Like she's really good with the kids. And, you know, I think I mentioned before, she helped the kids receive scholarships to college because she put systems in place for them, you know, to volunteer, become leaders and all that stuff and get these merit scholarships. I mean, I'm smiling all the way to the bank with that one because that kept money in my pocket. <laughs> Because I have to pay for all these schooling, you know. All my kids receive full scholarships to college, except for this last one. He did, but he transferred, and when he transferred, he lost the, the money. But my two, my two old, my older kids, both of their schools is almost two hundred thousand. I wouldn't even. I, they they would have gone to the community college <laughs> by paying that kind of money for no college, you know. So, but she helped them. So in that case, it's it's great. So. So the thing I'm trying to uh, point, um, uh, and, and, and there's no, that is not trying to say that they're more disciplined. It's just that they're, they're little, people like that are typically a little more structured. 
They just have a structuring. So for those of us who don't necessarily have that, we have to kind of put things in place to create those structures. That's why I said systems a little bit earlier, because a system will say to me, okay, this is how I'm going to do X, Y, Z. You know, I'm like you, Tracy, I have this, I'm, I'm, you know, I plan my weeks out fairly pretty much, but I'm, I still haven't gotten it. Like I still don't do much on, you know, online. I still do a lot of offline because for me it's easier. And also I can get to it quicker. So it helps me to manage my days a little better when I can flip and say, oh, okay, I got time blocking going on. You may remember time blocking from last time where I'm blocking off an hour and a half to do X, Y, Z. Like, for instance, next week, I'm flying to Dallas. And I'm excited to announce. Um, I've made a, I have a partnership with an organization called HR Education. Big, big organization. They have a beautiful, beautiful studio in Dallas. And we're partnering to get into their major network to create online courses. So I'm doing my first micro credentialed course on diversity, equity, and inclusion. <laughs> our, our model of DEI from the inside out. And so it's gonna be a six course uh, uh, training with testing and modules, and it's gonna be self-paced. So people can go through it, they will get a micro credential at the end. But they're gonna also learn some innovative ways to do DEI. Now, why am I excited about that? Because, um, you know, one, it's just something I've always wanted to do. But two, I'm saying that for a reason, not to boast on Coach D. I had to plan my entire week out to get ready for that trip. <laughs> There's a lot of things to kind of do. There's a few things that got to be put in place that still aren't in place. And even though we're a week out. And so it's all structured in this book. So like when I'm done with you all, I got two more modules. I got to kind of clean up and put put into a different wording and things like that because there's some things we want me they want me to kind of change and so i'm blocking off like three to four hours just for that and i won't do anything else i don't care what comes my way i don't care what phone calls what text messages what emails i'm just not going to do it now for me that's hard <laughs> because i i my, my mindset is when i i can shift gears real fast anyone any, you know what i mean by that like i can I could be on task and get a call from a family member and then boop, now I'm on the phone for an hour. I'm like, nope. So what I do is I shut this phone off. <laughs> that, hey, way Coach, yeah, that way I won't get the call. Yes. Before you go on. So Taryn, I know, I know I've seen you at other meetings. So I know that Debbie, Lucia, Lila, and I all know each other. Taryn, I know you work for Open Hearth. Mm -hmm. Can you share what your role is at Open Hearth for those that may not know? Oh, sure. Um, I'm the family savings uh, program coordinator there. So um, that program specifically um, helps uh, participants save for a first time home education or car purchase. Uh, uh, so they develop a savings goal and then also participate in um, some financial literacy via our workshops. Which is, and coach, I, I'm, I'm sorry to jump in and say that, but I just realized I'm like, I know I've been on meetings with Taryn. But we're not on meetings frequently. So I just wanted to refamiliar now, right? I just wanted to refamiliarize myself with the resources. So I, I apologize for cutting. No, you have to apologize for that. That's okay. That's fine. And um, I've interacted with her, so that's why I guess I didn't do the read the introduction <laughs> thing. We've we've interacted before. But um, no, thank you for doing that. And thank you because it did kind of for me uh help me to understand fully because that's great work that you're doing. You know, it really is. Absolutely. Um, very, very important work. You know, um, I remember we were first time homeowners and it made a huge difference in our lives when we got our house because we lived in projects and apartments most of our years. And then we ended up getting a home. Matter of fact, my mom ended up buying a uh, home with another, like you call them, like, come on, say, what did the attached type of homes and this home on the other side. And so we were able to rent, rent the other side out. So she has some residual income too. So thank you for, for your work. If that's okay. Thank you, Tracy Pierce, for, for asking. All right. You know, so... So I mentioned again, so self-discipline is something we really want to put uh, uh, some energy into. And the next one too, is this another self and that's self-motivation. You know, I, I think sometimes we have a tendency to look for certain external factors to motivate us and it's okay, nothing wrong with that. But I think the strength in our mindset and the way we do things is really steeped in the way we motivate ourselves. You know, what are some things that I need to think about to inspire myself as a leader, uh, follow, inspire myself as a coworker, a teammate, 
as a parent, you know, all these different things. And like you said, Taryn, you have four kids. I have four too. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the forest fence now because I have a 26 year old. I have a 20, about to turn 22. I have one 21, 20 and I have a 13, you know, and the, the, the 13 is all four of them rolled up into one. <laughs> If Tell know me what I about mean. it. I those teenagers. <laughs> I and it's a boy, so I thought it might be a little different. Oh now. no, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, they teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, and Lord knows they have their own mode of operations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I I've learned to do having four of them, I learned that there's a thing called a wave. I just gotta ride it. <laughs> and my dream in life is to get you to seventeen. There's something about that seventeen mark where things start to kick in. <laughs> All right, that so, gives me hope. hope. It gives you hope. <laughs> so I, I, I tell my, my my oldest daughter, she's like, she's this, she's daddy's girl. She travels with me on business a lot now. She does all kinds of things, Sophia. And she was the first youth to ever keynote for the National Association of Workforce Development Professionals, the Youth Symposium. My daughter keynoted there. And it's just, it was incredible. It was, you brought a dad moment. That was an incredible dad moment, you know. But she looks at my younger daughter and she always said, you know, her name is Abigail. Abigail. You need to blah, 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 blah. And I look at her and I said, really? <laughs> Do you remember when you were 13? <laughs> exactly. I, they forget I said, quickly. I, I was waiting for you to get to 17. And once you got there, we good now. I said, but girl, please. <laughs> so anywho, but they're blessing. You know, thank goodness for them. But even with kids, it's just, you know, we got to time, take time for ourselves. You know, we got to time. We got to, what do I need to do so I can get some, you know, that's that self-care thing we talk a lot about, you know, I can have a way of uh, seeing things and doing things where I can get some some time to breathe and decompress and and all of that, you know. So but self-motivation, really, when I think about it, self-motivation is a person's way of assuring themselves or ensuring themselves that, you know, I'm going to have the energy that I need to do what I need to do on a day to day basis, because I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do what it takes in order for me to have that energy by self-motivation. And so I was put self-care in as well, you know? So um, I just did this training in, in Washington. I was really honored by that. I was the first time doing a keynote. I did a keynote. I've done most of the states. Y'all know I've been at Pennsylvania Workforce Development Association many times, but I did the keynote for the Washington State Workforce Development Association. There's about 800 people there and, and I keynoted for them and and I'll tell you something, it was, it was, it was an, it was, it was an, an, an incredible experience, you know, to, to, to be out there with them. But, um, you know, uh, I'm thinking just about kind of digressing back to something else I'm thinking about with this conversation is that, you know, the commitment of time and, and, and things like that, that it takes to, you know, be able to do this work and, and you get out there and like, I needed energy. So I do things to self-motivate myself to be able to stand on those stages and do this such, but I share with that audience that to me, um, self-motivation is critical for our industry because of what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know what I mean? So I'll share, I mean, I literally share with, and, and it's something of the many things that I shared, that thing really resonated because people were saying at this event that, you know what, coach, we don't think about that too much because we're so busy trying to motivate other people. You all know in your your space, that's what we do. That's, that's what we do. Tracy, you know, Lila, Lucia, Lucia, Debbie, y'all know, uh, Taryn, we we spend so much of our time, what, pouring, 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 be it to our staff, be it to our clients, be it to our stakeholders, contractors, you know, things like that. So this is what I do. I'm a big one reader. I love reading. I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and say I'm a, I'm a, one of those people that say read, they'll read, you know, three bucks a month. That's not me. If I get through one every two months, <laughs> I'm good. So I'm not going, you know, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yep, that's true. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's that emotional intelligence, Tracy, you're talking about right there, you know, just to be able to do that. And, um, but I like to read because you know why? I learn new things. I learn new ways of handling things. You know, I, I learn new ways of, interacting with people, you know, all these different things. And so I love that. And then another thing too, like I, you know, I motivate this. Is, I do a lot of motivational stuff. I mean, I'm inspiring and people all over this country, but I want to be inspired too. So I can go online and I can pull up some of my old mentors, Zig Ziglar, and many people like that who inspired me. And guess what? Now I'm being inspired. 
you know, and motivated. And, and, and so, so that it's important to understand that you, nobody is going to take care, inspire you. You got to inspire yourself. You, you, people will inspire you, but you have to make inspiration of yourself a priority. And, and, and I'm saying that going into the new year, because it seems like every year that goes by, there's more and more stuff coming down the pike. You know, it's like things just keep happening. You know, is the government going to be open, you know, for a month? Or is it, are they going to close it? <laughs> you know, you hear all these different things and you're like, whoa, where are we going with all of this? You know, next year is going to be a a year for um, political campaigns. And we're going to look at, you know, pres presidential and that's going to be ugly. I mean, it's like, it's, you know, how it is I mean, when I was growing up, Democrats and Republicans were eating burgers together. You know, <laughs> they throwing burgers at each other, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and man, you know, the politics has become so acrimonious. It's crazy right now. But that's not the only thing. You know, it's like stuff we see on television. Wars have taken place now. We didn't use wars. We didn't have wars for a long time. Now we got two major wars going on at the same time. You know, the you know, and um, the one with the Ukraine and the one over now in Israel and, you know, with uh, Pakistan. And so I'm saying that a lot is going on. So we have to kind of find ways to stabilize ourselves and be motivated, you know, to um, kind of wake up every day with a sense of energy and synergy to do, do this work, you know. And, um, and, then, and then the last thing I want to mention as far as 2000, and we'll jump into some priority management here in a moment, really focusing on is besides self-motivation, going back to that self-care piece, find time to make time for yourself. And, and we talked about it briefly, but, you know, I realize there's times I just need time for Daryl. As much as I love other people, I, I need some time for me, you know, and I don't want to go into a full-blown self-care program, but I tell you something that's worth it, you know. Like sometimes my family, like, where are you going? I said, I'm not even going to tell y'all. <laughs> well, where were you? Don't worry about it. I'll be okay. I'm going to spend some time with me, you know. And down here, it may mean taking a walk or it may be going to the park or, I don't know, sometimes if you have little kids, Taryn, that may be hard because you can't leave them home by themselves. You know, you need somebody there to, to work, to support you there. But, but um, you know, even in your own house, reading the book or just trying to take some downtime, going on the back, in your backyard or something. Because I just think today we spend so much time taking care of others. We do very little to take care of ourselves. And I think that that will cause us to be somewhat burnt out. So, so anyway, those are just a few things to think about going into the new year. You know, some self-motivation, you know, um, self-discipline and self-care. See, it's easy. Three selves. <laughs> All right. Three selves. So, so let me ask you, well, I know a lot of times I'm training and I'm sharing things, but you may not want to share this, but I'm going to give each of you a minute because we don't, like, it was great that Tracy mentioned to Taryn share what she's doing, but if we go around and each person kind of tell a little bit about what we do, and just make this comprehensive, even though y'all know each other, I want to hear some of this myself. And how is it going? Like, do you feel good about what things are? Now, again, you share what you feel comfortable sharing. You don't have to go into detail, but just share what you, what you come, you know, and um, just going to take a moment before we go into some of these, because what I'm going to share with you, is going to be just some stuff here, but it's not, I'm not going to overwhelm you with all this. But so let's kind of go around and say what, what it is you do how is it going in your department? Because part of my work here in doing these trainings is overall culture, coming together, bringing people together to synergize around workforce development success. And so, but it's good to know what's going on in the different part departments and what people are doing. So we already got you, Taryn. So and since Tracy, since you mentioned it last time, I'll put you on the spot. Tell us again what you do and mm -hmm. how is it going? Like, do you feel good about what things are for you right now? Um, so I am a I am the youth workforce coordinator. My role is uh, to provide oversight and compliance to the uh, Career Corps youth program at the PA Career Link Chester County. Mm -hmm. I have four other uh, funded programs: Trellis for Tomorrow, Young Men and Women in Charge, the Garage, and the mm. Economic Development Foundation's Healthcare Connect. So pretty much 
you know, staff to the Workforce Development Board, uh, staff to the Council for the Workforce for Tomorrow. I do a lot of meetings around youth initiatives. So, you know, for example, I might go to a Perkins meeting um, for the career and technical education. I'm on two separate committees for that one. I might go to apprenticeship meetings. So pretty much, and when I say youth initiatives, like the youth um, forums that the state has, there's it, there's just a lot to it. It's really hard for me to sum it up. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Um. So, are you looking for what I feel is going well? Or are you yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, this is this, this, this a synopsis. Like it's going well, or I would like it could be even when well, I would like to see something in, enhanced a little bit. It could be either yeah. or. So, and again, it's not just something you know, nothing you know, extensive, but just some general. Yeah. I I will say this. One thing that I have always felt in working for government is sometimes I wish we had more autonomy to move on things. Mm -hmm. gotcha. um, I understand there's processes involved. I understand there's budgets involved. I understand we need to have planning meetings, but I've also felt, <clears throat> boy, it'd be great to go to one of these, whether we're talking the workforce development conferences or when we go to Hershey and learn about what other counties do. It would be so great to just, hey, here's this idea about, you know, purple paper and how it can benefit everybody. I just wish we could like immediately go back and use it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel you on that one. Yeah. It's it's yeah. like. I feel you on that. Be, mm. Because because of it, because it's a bureaucratic system, you know, it's well, then you have to have a meeting and then you have to have a meeting about the meeting about the meeting about the meeting. And then we got to look at the budgets and then we got to, well, how are the other, what the other counties are doing may not work for our county. And what, like, what does that all mean? So mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. a year later, whatever that idea is that you had about the purple paper doesn't happen yeah. or it does in a revised way, which is fine. But, you know, I guess, you know, for my personality, everybody, I'm somebody where when I hear something and I think it's fabulous and would benefit the greater good, I just want to immediately act on it. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. really wish I had that power to immediately go for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you and about 200,000 other workforce. <laughs> I say that yeah. because I, tra I travel all over the country. And, and I'm uh, sure there know, are anybody oh, you're, you're tied to this. And, and, I, and, yeah. I, and I, hear, I hear it a lot. And I thank you for sharing that because it's the truth. And then, but I think a lot of times what, what I found that, that I don't want to say it worked, but at least can move the needle a little bit is when multiple people come to the table with yeah. um with a plan and, and and present it. But then then it's not one individual trying to do it. It's like multiple people trying to do it. That doesn't necessarily guarantee that it gets it's gonna get there, but at least right. it shows it shows some synergy. I'll say the reason why I give it like I just spoke for a group here in Florida. It's taken a year to get one presentation to these folks. <laughs> <laughs> and and the reason why is because at the Nordic convention, there were several people that said, we're going to stay on these folks until we get you here. <laughs> so they, they kept going back to their leadership and going back to their leadership. And now the leadership had me out and they're like, God, man, why did we wait so long? But it did take, it took, it took that synergy. So again, that's not the cure all, but, you know, sometimes I guess that synergy helps a little bit. You know, but I hear you. I hear I hear what you're saying. hundred percent. Lila, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you and what you're doing. Well, I was honestly hoping that you do Lucia and Debbie first. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but since uh, you called on me, I will. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what I do is I, um, similar to Tracy, I oversee the Title I Adult and Dislocated Worker Programs, primarily at the career link. Right. Um, so I guess my focus is always on, you know, how I can assist the uh, provider staff with technical assistance. Um, you know, I do, I have gotten okay. myself into a routine where I do, um, file reviews monthly only because, um, uh, just to familiarize myself, cause it's been a long time since I've monitored things like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I won't, you know, and I let them know, I said, this, this is really kind of for training for me. I'm not necessarily going to mm -hmm. offer feedback or whatever, but, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, if I see something that's alarming, I'll, I'll, I'll say yeah. something. But mm -hmm. 
But mm -hmm. I like I like um the fact that the Title I services are are I don't know what you can say, like really broad. So mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't it, I don't just focus on the job seeker and mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I get a chance to go to the business service team so we can hear about mm -hmm. the employers and you know what mm -hmm. their needs are. I like the networking uh, and the career events because I like to see the engagement between the employers and the job seekers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But um, I mean, as far as feeling, I, I don't really have a feeling, I, I mm. guess. I, yeah, I guess I would feel some of the stuff Tracy's feeling like, you mm -hmm. know, when, when we see things that might benefit the uh, folks coming in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I like the fact that I'm able to have dialogue and say, hey, well, can we do that here? Um, mm -hmm. uh, Jeanette and I were in Allentown last week, so I kind of took time. I went a day early and I kind of took mm -hmm. time and went in as if I were just a person wanting to use their services just mm -hmm. to see, um, you know, the difference in the way yeah. they do yep. things a little bit than mm -hmm. we do. Uh, not to criticize or whatever. Um it was just interesting, you know. Each mm. career link runs differently, so yeah. Sure when I do. Get calls, sometimes when I get on calls and Zoom calls and I hear about what they're doing, I don't know, up in the Poconos or Erie or whatever, mm. I'm like, wow, mm. you know, that that's pretty neat. But mm. I do believe that some people make, you know, some areas make changes because of the clientele that they're dealing with. Yep. You know, there, it, there's it, a lot it. of rural rural areas in a, in and like one the one area said they use all their earn participants as paid work folks mm. to help with the you know, in the career link you know with the right. crc and things like that i was mm. like wow that, that's excellent and i okay. do see some of that happening in our career link too but um I but it. as far mm. as how i'm feeling about the job it's it, 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 I'm, I'm it's okay I, mm. I i do need to do a little more self-motivation and self-assessment mm. at the same time because i came from a position of leadership and now you know i'm mm. not really i mean i'm not going to say i'm not still a leader it's just a lot of times I have a tendency to say to myself, okay, Lila, yep. you know, that's not your role, though. Yeah. Um, yep. So I just, I have to be mindful. That's good. Yep. That's good. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm learning a little bit about more about you all. And I just I realized I didn't, you know, I didn't I haven't really gone into depth. So Tracy kind of opened that up and I think it's good because I want to know a little bit more about your role. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Debbie and Lucia, anyone you want to go? Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, sure, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I do. I'm a coordinator, monitor, just like Lila and Tracy, mm -hmm. but I do the DHS side. So mm -hmm. earn, work ready, um, anything yeah. DHS related is on me. Okay. Um, but it's going good. There's not okay. really many complaints. Yeah. yeah. Um, just good. chugging along, you know. That's good. That's good. How's earn coming along? Pretty good. It's doing all right. Yeah, it's going along. Yeah. It's going good. You know, I've been no, working with some of the clients with PAPS yeah, through, through they, they yeah. They've been mm -hmm. telling me that it's, it's been really great. Oh, the people, it's, it's been phenomenal. It's been phenomenal. We, I mean, they get on there and we just have the greatest conversations and we have, they walk away with strategies. They even message me after the events. I get messages from I'm them. Happy to hear and, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been extremely well. This is my second year doing it with them. You they, know, my second year. Passed mm -hmm. on the, the leadership. They're like, he's he's been doing great. They've really been connecting with you. Yep. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for doing that too. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It truly really has. Yep. So uh, and uh, we meet twice a month. Yep. Yep. Twice a month. So, yep. All right. And last but not least, Debbie. Oh yeah. <laughs> thank you. Mm. Mine. <laughs> Where do I start? Okay, mm. the second quarter was like a roller coaster for me because I received the promotion. So there I had to, oh, I work as the fiscal coordinator now. Earlier I was mm. the accounts clerk. Gotcha. So April when the new staff joined, I had to train her at the same time, perform my work, and I have to get trained myself to do the new mm. role. Like yeah. almost for three months I struggled. I don't know when I woke mm. up, when I slept. I was working mm. 16, 17 hours. You can go and see the calendar. You only know, one in. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like tough. Hmm. Now I am like sort of settled down. Yep. Uh, able to perform my work, but still receiving trainings and a lot of things. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, that's okay. about me. Thank okay. you. No, no, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you, you may. I was tired when you said sixteen hours. I was like, God, that, 
thought I worked hard. <laughs> that was true. I was yeah. not taking. I was not taking care of the. I forgot to even drink water. You believe me or not? <laughs> that was like that. And you know, some <laughs> it led me to some sickness, and then I had to get treated yeah. for that. Was oh, like, yeah. uh, when you don't yeah. drink water, yeah, the salivary glands they don't produce saliva. Then yeah, it causes some lump towards near your yeah. ear. Uh, what is mm -hmm. the parotid gland? Something like that. So I had to get okay. it operated. I I was like, mm -hmm. it was bad yeah. for me. That's when yeah. I realized, like, yes, yeah, self care. You got to do self care. Is it you know? And I, and thank you for sharing that too. Thank you. I love all your candor too. You're being very honest about things. And I just want to say, you know, that's why we talk about the things we talk about. Like I said, this industry, we have we have a lot of responsibility. Like y'all have, you know, I don't do what you do now, but I did years ago. Like I said, under when we were a contractor, I understand the pressure that comes with the work. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, you know. And like you said, a lot of things you want to do, like the state of Delaware. God, man, they felt like they lived in my office. It's like <laughs> if I made a move to the left, they were right there. You know, you're supposed to be going to the right. You know, <laughs> like, OK, I'm sorry. I did. You know, I used to stick my hand out because it was always getting slapped. <laughs> now, I know you're doing well, but you didn't supposed to do it that way. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> I'm sorry. We only graduate 80 percent of our 90 percent of our kids. But I know it's a problem by the way we went about it. <laughs> but. You know, so we would we would see you would you know Tracy you would love that we had a high grade youth graduation rate we we put those kids we got but see we did we did very non traditional type stuff and but we were getting our hands slapped a lot man you're not supposed to do that per the contractor like okay and uh, so I I get it you know and uh, but I'm but I'm grateful for those days because it taught me to be compassionate for you now because I was there you know what I mean I I, I experienced it and I understand. You know what y'all you know have to do on a day to day basis is to keep this machine running, you know. And so um, it's funny. I'll say one last little state of Delaware funny thing. I we were contracted through um, just uh, uh, Delaware County, and um, and then we we would it, through Delaware was the state of Delaware, but in Delaware it was Delaware County. If you know, I remember a guy named Frank Carey. He was there many many years ago. Frank was the guy running the show back then, and uh, boy, he and I had some nice conversations. <laughs> He, Frank Frank was over here and I was over there. <laughs> well, and Coach, I think, yeah. you know, going yeah. from mm -hmm. at any in Taryn, even in the role that you do, working mm -hmm. directly with clients, mm -hmm. you gain such a unique perspective that you take mm -hmm. with you when yeah. you transition to more administrative work. Mm -hmm. Because like all of my years, and I even had in my case, case management, like back to mm -hmm. 2001, before mm -hmm. I even came to the county, right? Mm -hmm. About eight, nine years before I did that. And then I had my other eight. So if you look at it, I've had over like 20 years of case management experience. And then when mm -hmm. I transitioned, it's it's amazing how much you retain and you develop, at least I think, you develop more appreciation more humility, more understanding when yep. you've done both roles. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working, you know, you remember what it was like to work directly with a client and everything yep. that you went through mm -hmm. with your feelings, because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not. really not easy work. And anybody, anybody that would say to me, hey, being a social worker is easy work. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not easy. And mm -hmm. if it were up to me, social workers would be making over a million a year mm -hmm. as one of those absolutely needed professions in society. But that aside, mm -hmm. um, you you gain an appreciation for what the staff is going through, what the clients go through. And that, at least for me, that comes through in my work. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. I mean, once you've done it, that's why I tell people all the time I can stand on stages or I can do these trainings because I've been there. I, I, it's, it's, you know, like you can bring anyone and plop them in to do something. But if you don't understand, you know, systems and processes and politics and all of that, you're just saying stuff like you. you, you and I don't. I, that's why you always hear me say. You know, I'll say something, but I understand, you know what I mean? Because I was there, you, you know, I, I know what it's like when you're getting audited and I know when it's like, you know, when it's time to do your contracts all over again and you got to do 222 years of paperwork. 
know, I was like, okay, I mean, we got to do this once a year. It's going to take us like two months to get this paperwork together for this upcoming RFP. So I, you know, so I understand. So when I do this, to me, it's just to inspire you in your work because I understand that there are just certain things you're going to do that are be very consistent and they probably won't change too much, you know, but it's how you, it's really, even though I may not change much out there, it's how I, 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 I think about it in here that makes so, it make sense, you know? Yeah. So I, I just want to highlight on something that just keeps coming up and I hear many employers talking about this too. Uh -huh. um, the pandemic changed the way workforce, Every, uh, is, it, mm. you know, <laughs> the workforce yep. period, you know, yep. not right, mm. wrong or indifferent, whether anybody mm. feels like, okay, because we work totally remotely that that's the way to go, whatever. Mm. Not saying it like that. I'm just saying that um, when you talk about how, how I feel, like mm -hmm. it's not a feeling just for me, or when I really honestly thought it was, mm -hmm. um, because I never stopped working during the pandemic when mm -hmm. I'm the whole, almost the entire world did. Yep. You know, uh, social service agencies couldn't stop. Couldn't you stop. know, they had people nope. living there, you know, in the building every day. I mean, there, there was probably a greater need for social mm -hmm. service agencies, you know, as far as food mm -hmm. and clothing, mm -hmm. and, you know, things that people either didn't have access to or could, or just couldn't afford or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And then there was a whole dynamic of people getting lots of money. Yep. You know, all the um, P, P whatever, PPP yeah, money. Yeah, all all like, nobody wanted to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still have money right, coming their right, way. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so yeah, coming yeah. back into workforce <laughs> and saying, hey, where's the foot traffic in the career link? And why, 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 does, why don't people want to get a job? And blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, the life workforce has changed. There yep. were tons of people who just retired and said, I, I, I'm done. You know, yep. like this is, a, you know, an opportunity for me and a way out. So um, on a daily basis, because, you know, being in workforce development, I think about the youth to the senior citizen, mm -hmm. you know, not just, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the way it was prior pandemic when, mm -hmm. you know, you have people who are in school, you know, and trying to better themselves, get an opportunity or whatever. I mm -hmm. mean, you've got employers saying, as long as they're breathing, I'll take them. Right. You, mm -hmm. know, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a different, it's a whole different dynamic. So, yep. Yep. Um, and, and employers have had to, in some ways, even compromise, you know, and, I, and, and yeah, yeah, I've had, I've had some friends, I have a friend who's, uh, does uh, work, workplace ethics and he's man he talks about that all the time he said it's just a lot of employees have had to settle they're, they're still struggling that's why I'm still writing that book the post-pandemic leadership because it's all changed and yes it has, you know, it has. yeah it, it, it has changed it, yeah mm -hmm. it's easy to look at for me <laughs> just speaking for myself it's easy mm -hmm. for me to look at the way it was and compare mm -hmm. it to now but it is it's never going back no, no, so no, this, it's, this, this it's is our new total normal. mindset. Yep. It's a total yep. change. I'm not saying it's a bad change because, you know, there, you know, so, so now I feel like boots on the ground, we need to be innovative with this. Like, you know, how we, 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 you, we cannot, I just listened you know. to like partner calls and the way they want career links to continue to operate or wherever, but maybe that's not the way for them to go. <laughs> you, you At know some I mean? point you got to come out of that way of thinking, you know, and it's hard when you're in a, in a, in a, in a, in a such a big, system of doing things like you but yeah. you gotta yeah. you know it, because what happens over time if we don't is we start to see things happen I, I was consulting this one organization out in Chicago called the Safer Foundation and Safer um, does a lot with reentry and um, and they were saying that they're losing a lot of funding and what they found was it wasn't that the funding wasn't there. It's just where the funding started going. And what they started doing is there's a lot of little mom and pop type organizations popped up that were nimble mm -hmm. and made shifts to, to virtual and all of that in, in easier, innovative ways to get people to participate. And so the funding sources started shifting to those people, you know, mm -hmm. while this big organization that was getting hundreds of millions of dollars all the time was still trying to hold on to what it was. So what they realized is they had to, like you said, you know, Delilah, they had to become innovative. And and then, you know, they never really kind of got back what they what they had. Right. <laughs> kinda, not to sound funny, they were a little bit like, 
blockbuster. They wait a little too long, <laughs> you know, but I think in our industry, we need to understand that times are changing and, mm -hmm. and people are now looking at other options. You know, you got gig economies where a person can put yeah. together two, three gigs, man. They can make, they're making that money. They're like, well, I'll just do this. Or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or they may do two or three part-time jobs, you know, okay, I, I'm doing virtual. I can do part-time for this company, part-time for that company, part-time for that company. It's, it's, it's just, and you know, no, I live in a, a condo community down here in Florida. I don't know if I ever want to buy a house. <laughs> it's nice to have folks right, take care of right. you, right? But because, you know, we, and we still have our place up in Delaware. But but the point I'm making is down here, it's like most of these folks got jobs, tech jobs. They're doing this, doing that. You know, they just, it's not like it used to be, you know, where. You know, well, you I say that because of, I kind of say that because of what Tracy was saying, you know, sometimes it yeah. takes a year to implement something. Well, mm -hmm. maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This could take five years, you know, to, yeah. to really change the thought process of what we can do with these government funds, because we can mm -hmm. we can in it, be as innovative as we want. Yeah. In, in Chester County. But if we can't, if though if the, our funds don't support us doing these innovative things, mm -hmm. then um, it's just an idea, you know. It's a, it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and I, and I think I, I, I that's why I said I hear you and I do understand it. You know what I mean? And um, but I think. If I can say this now, I'll, I'll just you know, keep us moving with with this. Um, I think at some point it's going to be the option is going to be innovator. It's just not going. You, you got to innovate. It's just like I said. Like, and, and I'm saying I'm not saying this to you all, but I'm talking about even the funding sources have to understand we can't continue to do things the way we've always done them, and expect people to come through the doors because now we got to be creative in how we can get people in the doors. And so it's just times have changed, and hopefully those who who are more on the side of just making these decisions can come over and taste a little bit of the water over here and see what y'all deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I think that would be helpful, you know, but uh, thank y'all for this. This was helpful. I know we haven't really done this before and I've really kind of shifted, right? And I just wanted us to, and I think this is healthy and it's good, but I do want to leave you with a few points on priority management because we did talk about that. And these are just some uh, things to think about because even as we go into this whole realm of innovation that we're trying to get into here, we have to understand the way we think about things um, shifts. And so like there, you know, there's a big difference between time management and priority management. Okay. So with like time management, it's time management. You got 24 hours in a day. You're going to manage the day. You know, when I, like me and my book, I got up, you know, up at five 30, go to the gym. You know what I mean? I'm a man of prayer, so I'm gonna pray for a little while. You know, um, you know, um, does my well, I want to help my wife out with my daughter. There's anything I need to do, so I, I slot this time out, and so I could focus in on these activities during this time slot. I want to be in the office by eight, eight fifteen at the latest. I want to, you know, if I'm not traveling and doing my thing, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in there doing what I have to do, getting my paperwork done. That's time management. You know, and, and, and time management is 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 awesome. I think it's great to be able to manage my time to the point where I'm looking at my days and, and, and being very clear on what, what I'm trying to accomplish. Some people do that um, the night before, you know, some people go to, okay, let me look at my day and, and all of that. Like for me, I do that to some extent, but there's certain aspects of my days are almost like non-negotiables. Like I said, from my morning, my routine, my working out, like this last month has been hard for me because I had, I've been on this ve a veggie type of diet thing I was doing and I couldn't work out. So not get up at 5.30. My body was up at 5.30 every morning despite that because it's so wired to, you know, I just got up and I just would do walks or stuff like that because I couldn't weightlift or anything. But the point being is that, you know, that that's all in that time. Now, priorities management is probably another level, Okay. All right. Because priority management is managing those high level priorities in my work that I need to make sure that I'm taking care of. You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be super high level, but I know in order to be successful here in my work, these are things I got to be consistent in doing. And, and the reason why I say that is a lot of times we can have a tendency to just do the routine things that need to get done. And then the bigger things kind of get put to the back burner, even though those things are probably the more important things that we need to get done now. 
And so what we have to do with priority management is break uh, those, those things up that we know are important to our work assignment into priorities. And this is what I tell people all the time. Don't ever try to work on two major priorities at the same time. Whatever the priority is, focus on that for now to the best of your ability. You know, let's say there's a big project that's coming up and you know that I have to have X, Y, Z done by X, Y, Z day. Now I have my day-to-day -day routine stuff I got to get done too. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to time block a big chunk of my day, if possible, to work on that big high priority item so that when it's, when it's time for me to you know deliver on it, it's done. It's deliverable. Not, not, not waiting until the last minute to get it done. And so I'm, I'm up, like, for me, you know, my work, there's a lot of things that's important. Like content is important for my work because I'm constantly putting out content, you know, constantly. And so be it through training and development or blogs or verb videos or whatever we're you know, So I have to make sure every day that those areas, like right now I'm, I'm about to do a pod, a podcast, you know, we're going to be doing a podcast. And so we've been putting a lot of time into, you know, putting together the content, putting together intros, outros, um, connecting with organizations to help get the podcast out there. Me, when I say it's me and a few people that's on my, my team, and we're just putting a lot and right now because that is a high priority for us. We don't. Not, I said, you know, I, I should have had a podcast four years ago. <laughs> I said, but now I'm going to go into this new year with one. If I don't make it a priority, it won't happen because all the other responsibilities will overwhelm. And next thing you know, that that will not happen. And so you with a priority, you're saying this is going to be something. And you still use these things like we've all pointed out. We can do that, but it's just like, you know, we're blocking out time. So there's a great book out there. I can't, I think the guy's name is Michael Berger. I don't know, but the book is called Clockwork. All right, type that in the chat. It's called Clockwork. And that book really helped me um, because I think his name is Mark Michael Garber, something like that, um, Clockwork. And the way he talks about time uh, management of priorities in that book is that, you know, um, he talks about, you know, you know, the bees, they have the beehives and they have the queen bee. You know, the queen bee is, you know, the queen. <laughs> now, some communities you gotta be careful with that say using that terminology because the queen bee can be something totally different. <laughs> I'll just leave that one alone <laughs> for folks who know. But the queen bee in the beehive is only focused on producing. That's it. The bees are doing all the work in the B, 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 but the queen bee is focusing in on those high priority things that need to be done in that beehive so that beehive can function. And so the, the queen bee is not doing 522 different things. It's just, she, she's usually focusing on one or two things that need to be done to, you know, to, to make sure that that, that hive is functional. And so with, 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 um, the priority management, you need to understand your goals and objectives. You're like, what, what, what is it that I'm doing? Like, what's my goal and objective? What if I'm, what am I trying to accomplish? All right. And so that that's like sitting on the top of my mind as I am thinking about this priority. What, what, are, what is it going to look like when I succeed? Like when we were doing workforce under W, our, when we were running our programs, they were under WIA. Okay. I, I never we didn't I didn't go long enough in programs to um do the uh, WIOA because that came around 2015, 16. And we'd been sort of done with our programs by then. You know, and um and so we want to focus in our activity and on those those um when we were like when I was on those programs, we would look at those things that we needed to do to make sure one, we were compliant with what the state wanted, okay, that we stayed on course there, but then also what we needed to do in order to advance the client. You know, so everything else was kind of in the middle. Those two things were important. So for instance, for us, one big thing was community partnerships. So we needed to make sure that we were spending a copious amount of our time during the week fostering those relationships. We couldn't got to get so busy in the day-to-day -day routines that we weren't out working that part. 
So I had somebody on my team that was like their thing. They were out there building those relationships. I said, because we we have to be able to direct our clients to resources that are outside of the scope of what we do. And we can't do that if we're the only ones that they're interacting with. So we, um, and so the way we did it was, and I shared this in Washington the other day, and they kind of appreciated the, the little, little, little blurb that we gave. We did it by serving. And what I mean is I didn't, we didn't go to different agencies and organizations saying, Hey, could you help us with the youth or could you help us with our adult clients? We went in and we were big, big on, Hey, what are some of your needs? And how could we as a workforce organization help you with that? And so what, what it did was it changed the, it, it, it was a different type of approach because they were used for people coming in saying, help us with this and help us with that. Can you do this? We have these people. Can you help us place them on and on and on? And we're like, wait a minute, you come in trying to serve here? Yeah, we are. Because we believe in the sow and reap principle. <laughs> you know, we do. And we understand that the best way to win people over is helping them achieve what they're trying to achieve. You know, and so a lot of the workforce organizations in Delaware and Chester County, I mean, uh, uh, not Chester County, Delaware County said, man, these folks, you seem like to have, you have these good relations. I said, yeah, I said, because we're out there myself and everyone on my team, we're helping people out and in turn, they started helping us out. It just kind of went hand in hand. So it was just, you know, and so, um, but we had to make that a priority. And that's what I mean. You know, um, there's a thing called the Pareto principle. I know her, the 80, 20 rule. You know, there's a rule called the 80-20 rule. And now the way it's usually worded is 20% of the people do 80% of the work. <laughs> so that's 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 kind of how people used to kind of put it in that context. But what it's really saying um, with this 80-20 rule is, to put, is put your energy into the 20% that's going to produce the most outcomes, the positive outcomes. You know what I mean? Networking, meeting with people, building relationships, um, uh, uh, staying on task as far as certain assignments that I have, you know, now that means that sometimes you're going to have some things that may not be as aligned as you want because you're not putting a lot of emphasis on some of the lower hanging fruit, but you're going to be extremely productive by putting information, put your energy into the higher, the, the, the high priority things that produce like the queen bee, the most fruit for what you're trying to do in your position. And everybody's position is different. So let me pause for a second. Am I making sense? I don't want to seem like I'm speaking in a manner that doesn't connect. Does it make sense what I'm saying about priorities? Somebody tell me what you it kind of... It definitely <laughs> makes sense. And okay. they, I like the 80-20 rule. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're right, because that it, you could focus on that 80%, but then you'll be all over the place. All over um, the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and they and people will see that too, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I I think that's why the networking is real, and you know, I find myself going to like all kinds of different events, yep. you know. And and someone could say, well, does that really pertain to your job? But you know, I take my business cards, I meet people. I said, you know about our career link services. I can't rely on one outreach person to talk about all of our services you know what i mean yeah um, and, and but you i mean but i get it because you have to be that kind of person too you, you have to be willing mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. yep. want to you know what i mean yeah so. and some people's personalities are more driven towards it you know and that's why in certain organizations it's good to see who are those people and maybe you know uh, uh, assist each other with the gifts things that we do we do possess you know but you gotta i mean you know Somebody said like this, you know, relationships are the currency of the 21st century. Absolutely. You know, well, good leaders. Yeah. Know, so so it's good mm -hmm. for our leader and Jeanette to drive us mm -hmm. to different, um, mm -hmm. you know, she, she might email Tracy and say, hey, Tracy, you know, this came across my desk. Can you attend this? Yep. Hey, Liza, mm -hmm. her, hey, Lucia, you know, so that that's signs of a good leader too, and then to know yeah. where to put your people when, you know. Knowing that you can't be at every one of those, you can't be. Yeah, you, 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 you don't, and you don't want to, you know, because you right. want people to see exactly. you as a team, you know, not as an individual. Correct. You know, like, Correct. like a lot of people see me what I'm doing here, but I have other people doing other things because I can't, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I want to do it all, you know, it just doesn't, yeah. And that's that's just, that's just that yeah, is great leadership. And um, yeah. but thank you for yeah. that. Thank you, Lila. You're you're absolutely on point. And, I, and I'll just say that um, we 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 um we have to understand those those type of things produce the greatest like I 
I always share one of my one of my highlights of my youth program years ago was we, I think I've mentioned we were invited to speak at the White House. And um, and so um now granted the word kind of got out about our programs because we were focused a lot on graduation rates. We just thought that the more of these young folks we can get through college, high school and into some type of post-secondary activity, the better things are going to be. So we had tremendous success. But just like you said, um, Lila, a moment ago, we networked a lot. We connected with people. So one of those meetings, we connected with someone that was indirectly somehow connected to the White House. If I wouldn't have been at that networking meeting, I wouldn't have met this person. <laughs> and then the person heard about what we were doing and had direct contacts into White House, had a big workforce initiative back then, and they wanted somebody to speak to about the youth part. And they contacted me and said, hey, we heard about the success of your program. We checked with the Department of Labor. They confirmed it. And we would love for you to come and speak to us about youth and workforce. And I told them, I will under one condition. I have a young person I want to speak at this event. <laughs> they, they wanted me. And I said, no, 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 no. I want you to meet one of our young people and let them tell you about what's going on. And they would, they they fought it at first, but then after I convinced them, they let me bring this young man named Antoine Hall. I'll never forget it. And we went down there and that young man, boy, he he we, he was so nervous. He practiced that speech a thousand times. <laughs> he was like, coach, I said, so you went to the White House partner, man. Like, Come on, man, you, you're gonna get some serious juice out of this one. And so we got him he, and he gave this amazing speech and got like a 25 minute standing ovation and, you know, all kinds of, you know, high level officials were there. But that happened as a result of being out meeting people, <laughs> you know? And so you start realizing that we need to, we, we need to make sure we make that a, a prior. That's one part of it. But then also those assignments that we need to do that are necessary, you know, to, because, you know, we, we have people, like you said, funding sources, we got to make sure that we're staying on top of all those, because those are priorities too, you know? And then, um, and I always tell folks, sometimes they even make priorities to go to like the board meetings. Like I used to always go back then it was WIA. Every time the WIA uh, board met, I would be, I would be at those meetings. I just would go. And I don't know if they do that much nowadays, but back then they had the chairperson and all that. And we just would, it was in Delaware it was the state. So it was the state workforce board. And I was just, I just would go to those meetings. Why? Because I had to meet all the people that were, you know, <laughs> that were creating all the documentation that I had and the paperwork that I had to, the, the, you know, to the, the end up answering to. So I said, maybe I can help and tweak it a little bit <laughs> to make life a little easier by being in the meet, meet meetings as a person who's in the trenches. And so I was one of the few contractors to ever go to those meetings. I, they were, we would go there and folks weren't hardly there. And I said, man, that's ridiculous. This is a great opportunity. So, and then from that, I got to actually meet a pretty powerful mentor. His name was Nathan Hill. He was the chair of the workforce board. He was the president and CEO of Discover Card. Delaware is a big banking state. And uh, Nathan retired several years ago, but great mentor, great connection. Gave me some insights into being more effective in workforce. It was good. So, you know, so those are things, these are just, those are just a little thing. So um, another thing too is time block your day. And this one is hard for people because we have a tendency sometimes, you know, to um, want to, you know, I'm doing this and this between this hour and that hour. That's fine. But time blocking is good for priorities because time blocking means, okay, I'm blocking off three hours for this. Or I'm blocking off an hour and a half for this because I got to get it done. Like during this break, I blocked off uh, this that's coming up. Because I've been talking about finishing these books forever, <laughs> so I'm gonna I blocked off ten hours for one and ten hours for another. Because a lot of times I'm just gonna be sitting around and trying not to eat too much because I'm still on trying to watch my diet here. But you know, while I'm sitting around watching the ball game, I can write my I can write some pages. Or if I'm you know sitting around relaxing with the family, we just not, if we're not talking about anything, I can grab my computer and I can go to work. But I'm blocking that time off because I'm thinking I could probably get about ten or fifteen pages done of each book within that time frame, which gets me closer to finishing them. So I'm blocking it off because why? I want to get it done before the end of this year. I've been talking about this for the last several months and I'm not there yet, but time blocking helps with that. So, um, and I mentioned before some of the tools that are out here, you got Trello, you can you know, use technology tools. You got Asana. Asana is awesome, even the free version. 
because you can you can you can put you know different projects and programs that you're working on them and monitor how you're doing. So Asana, I'll just put that one in the, in the uh, chat feature, and uh, that's one. And the other one is Trello. Yeah, and so those are just tools. I use both of them. I'm not big on online stuff because again, I like to see it. But Trello, I do have my weeks scheduled out on Trello. So that it's almost like it's kind of seem like it doesn't make sense. But, you know, um, I have it in my planner and I have it on Trello. And the reason why that maybe sometimes I'm at a meeting and I can't get to my planner, but I can pop on Trello and say, okay, boom, this is what I have here for that. And I just, I have it, I have it on my phone. I can boom, take a look at it. I, I don't prefer that tool um, because I like the paper, but that's just another another way of going about doing this. So, so that's, that's, um, that's, that's, that's important. And it's so important to understand. And then, and then, you know, lastly, you know, when it comes to priority management, um, just, you know, make time, not just for priorities at work, but make time, like we go back to self-care for priorities at home. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, you mentioned having children, I block off time for my kids all oh, I and mean, I got to you know like but I took this little hat right here is uh, I mentioned them in Florida and this weekend they had thing they have a thing called the classic and the classic is when uh uh, uh this Florida State these are Florida I'm excuse me Florida A&M these are historic black colleges and universities Florida A&M played Bethune Cookman and so um you know, and it's a bit, it's huge. I mean, I've never seen so many people at a stadium in my life. It's like, then they have what's called the Battle of the Bands. And so we went to the Battle of the Bands. That thing was no joke. <laughs> you talk about some bands, boy, these schools have some bands, man. I was like, oh my God, this was incredible. Florida, Florida, Florida a and came out with that band. I thought I was going to pass on that my city was so amazing. I said, like, oh my, they call themselves the 100. I was like, what in the world am I looking at here? And so I'm watching the band. But I blocked, I had my boys with me. You know what I mean? Like for the Battle of the Bands, I had my whole family. But then the football game, I had my boys. And I, I nothing's going to come in between that. I don't care what came up. They got my time. When I, because I, I, one thing I did early in my career that I regret is I made them a priority, but there's times things could block it. You know what I mean? I, something can come up and say, okay, dad got to work. And so I started realizing, shoot, man, I'm going to tell you all something. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. You know, unless, you know, hell freezes over, I'm going to do it. And so that they know that you're a priority to me. You, you know what I mean? I don't want my, I never want my children to feel like they're second fiddle. I did one time to kind of make, I, I believe I did make them feel that way because it was always about work, 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 work. And I would make the excuse, well, this is how you live in this home, you know, and this is how you get to do the fun things that you do because that works. But then you start realizing for them, it's, it's, it's time. They don't, you know, and, um, and I realized I started doing a good job when one time I was almost pretty much in tears. I was in Lubbock, Texas, um, business. And every year I take my daughter, my oldest daughter, to da daddy-daughter dance. And um, I couldn't make it just one time because I was way on business. And uh, man, but one of my good friends who was um, part of a group we created called Dad United was available and he took her, you know, but... I said, you know, I felt so bad because I was way on business. So here we go again. And then my daughter said, dad, I just want to let you know, you know, she said, I know if you could be here, you would be here, you know? And she said, I just want to let you know, I appreciate the fact that you are deeply, you know, concerned about the fact that you're not here. It shows you how you care about me. And I said, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I did something right, you know, that she saw that it wasn't an old dad where it'd be like, well, almost the way it is to, it was, it pained me, you know, but that's because I make my family a response, uh, a priority as well. So, so those are just some things. Uh, time management is simple. Just manage your time. You know, you look at um, what, what, what's, you know, what's priority time wise and you, you block it off in your planner or something like a Trello. And priority management are those high, you know, and the priorities come in the three categories. I forgot to mention this. We call high poles, med poles, and low poles. High priority are those things that got to get done. Med poles are medium priorities that they're important, but they can kind of sit to the side. And low poles are low priority items. They're priorities too. Like if I had to not work out, I would not work out. Like if something came up and I had to go. It's not like, you know, 
I had to get, I have to, I, it's a part of what I would do, but if something came up, I can drop it and move on. But if I have a deadline with a project that I need to get done, I need to get that project done. You know what I mean? And so that's why I'm not just saying working out is a low priority for me, but it probably in certain days would not be as important as that deadline for one of my customers to have a particular project done. So, so anyway, hope this information was helpful. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if there's any questions that you may have. Um, hopefully you got something out of today. I really enjoyed the path that we went down. It was great to have the conversation with each other, but, you know, just realized, um, I guess my final words before I see you next year is that, you know, you count, I count and make ourselves priorities. Um, we give to other people, but give to ourselves too. <laughs> and, um, I always say this, if other people just want me to give all the time, every now and then you got to tell them, you know what? I love you, but guess what? I'm giving to myself today. <laughs> happy holidays to everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and happy holidays. Don't eat too much. And if you do, it's okay. Just, you know, <laughs> just wake up the next day, eat a little bit more. And then next week you'll be back to normal. <laughs> All right. Happy have holidays, everyone. Happy, ho lot, happy coach holidays. Day. Have a good yeah, one. Thank you. Yep. Happy holidays. Take care yeah. now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.